Quest order. Question number five, Eudini Sage. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for the Environment and Arts. What percentage of river swimming sites where data is collected in the most recent Ministry for the Environment Suitability for Swimming indicator update were graded poor or very poor? Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, of the few hundred uh, river sites that are monitored, 61% of them are graded poor or very poor. As the member is aware, though, uh, these few hundred sites are monitored generally because there is a quality concern, and so that data set is therefore in no way representative of the 425,000 kilometres of New Zealand rivers and streams, which are generally regarded as being in good condition by international standards. However, we are concerned that in the areas where fresh water quality is deteriorating, we do need to take action, which is why I was pleased earlier today to be announcing that from the 1st of August, national National standards for fresh water will be in place across the country, which is a critical milestone in improving the picture of fresh water quality in New Zealand. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Why, if she is concerned that fresh water is deteriorating, did she announce a national bottom line for human health today that means that our rivers will only have to be safe for secondary contact, that is wading and boating, and not clean enough for swimming? Mr Speaker. Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, at the moment, of course, the, the counterfactual is that there is no requirement for any particular standard for human health and actually putting in place a minimum requirement that at the very least every freshwater uh, area must be safe for wading and boating is a big step forward. What we've done today is confirm that every council must consider whether that is appropriate to also manage for swimmability. What has to be understood, Mr Speaker, is that each time we move the bar up through that ladder, it brings considerable extra cost onto communities and councils. And if the member is campaigning that they would set the standard there and not leave that choice to local communities, they're welcome to do so. But I look forward to seeing those billions of dollars included in their, est their financial estimates. Supplementary. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Why is the Minister leaving it to regional councils to consider swimmability, and doesn't she think that this is a national issue and a central government responsibility to ensure that rivers across New Zealand are clean and safe for swimming? Mr. Honourable Speaker, Amy Adams. Well, I'd always thought that member was a proponent of local decision making, but actually we do think it's for communities to decide above that minimum standard, which is brand new, has never been there before. It is for the communities to decide which areas are to be used for swimming and protected for that and which are not. And we're yeah. not going to impose billions of dollars of costs on ratepayers and communities in areas where they don't seek it. What we've put in place, Mr Speaker, is a considerable step forward from what Labour and the Greens were happy to live with and we're very proud of it. Supplementary. Order. 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 Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Well, what does she say to the Otago Regional Council, who said that the bottom line for human health should be contact recreation because such a low standard as secondary contact, where rivers are only fit for wading and boating, is, and I quote, not consistent with the national identity New Zealand associates with its clean image of its water resources. Mr Speaker? Honourable Amy Adams. What I'd say to the Otago Regional Council is that they are very welcome to set that standard across their water bodies if that's what their community chooses. The difference now, Mr Speaker, is that we have a national expectation of a minimum standard which has never been there before. That alone is going to impose some costs on communities, but it's up to them the extent they want to go beyond that. It would be a nonsense to impose cost on water bodies that no one wants to use for swimming or has contemplated for swimming. That's why regional decision-making then becomes important. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Why did the Minister ignore the approximately 90 per cent of submitters who wanted the bottom line for human health to be rivers that are clean and safe for swimming? Mr Speaker, Honourable Amy Adams. Well, we haven't ignored it. What we've done is made it compulsory now for every council to consider whether a swimming is the appropriate standard for that water body. That wasn't in the draft. And the reason, Mr Speaker, we've done that is because we understand the cost impact that goes with that. And as I've said, if those members want to include the billions of dollars of impact of putting that standard in, I look forward to seeing that in their alternative budgets. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. 
Does the minister still claim that no river water no, no sorry does the minister still claim that no river quality is allowed to deteriorate when the freshwater science society said that the proposed limits on nitrate in her proposals last november have the potential for new zealand rivers to become some of the most nitrogen polluted amongst oecd countries while still remaining compliant and her announcements today have not changed the nitrate limit. Mr Speaker. Honourable Amy Adams. I don't accept that because, as that member well knows, there is already a requirement for water quality in a region to be maintained or improved. There is no ability, and nor do I imagine there's any desire for councils to suddenly rush downwards in their water quality. Communities and councils, in my experience, are absolutely focused on improving water quality. But the important point is this. Today, there is nothing stopping our lakes and rivers to be completely dead environments. That's what Labour and the Greens were happy with. We're not. This is a step forward, no matter how the member tries to spin it. Yes, Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Slade. Thank you. Did the minister ask the Ministry for the Environment to tighten the nitrate limits in the national policy statement following the Board of Inquiry's decision on the Tukituki plan change, which rejected her government's approach of allowing nitrogen pollution to reach limits that are toxic to fish and algae, and if not, why not? Mr. Speaker. Amy well, Mr Speaker, first of all, the member is entirely wrong in her categorisation uh, of the impact of the Tuki Tuki decision on this framework. It simply does not do what she's suggesting, which is typical. But more importantly, Mr Speaker, the government has made very clear that we are not looking to re-engineer what's come out of the science panel. We engaged a science panel deliberately so that there would be a nationally agreed and settled science basis, and in no instance have I or other ministers directed them to change those numbers. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. If the minister engaged the science panel, why was a basic and well-established measure of river health, the macroinvertebrate community index, excluded when the Freshwater Sciences Society and many others said it should be included? Mr Speaker. Order. <laughs> Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, well, this is a question I've answered time and time again in this House, and it's this. We do accept that the macroinvertebrate index is a very useful performance measure and indicator of ecosystem health. That is not the same thing as saying it is suitable or possible to include in a national framework like this. And actually, uh, the member may be interested that the advice I've had says that the way the RMA currently constrains what can go in an NPS, I am prevented from including it as a performance monitor within the framework. We do encourage councils to use it in that regard. Uh, we do think it's useful, but it doesn't fit into a framework set at a national level like this. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Is the real reason that the Minister has ignored the advice of water quality scientists, the calls by thousands of New Zealanders, the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment, the Otago Regional Council and many others, four national bottom lines that provide for swimmable rivers is that this government stands up for polluters and irrigators and not for ordinary New Zealanders who want to swim in our rivers. Mr. Honourable Speaker, Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, I think the fact that the Green Party can stand there and not find one good thing to say about the fact that this is a step forward in water quality says far more about their politicking and ideology than any desire to actually see water quality improvement. Supplement order, supplementary question, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Can, can the Minister advise the House what progress the Environment Canterbury Regional Council made in setting minimum water quality standards in that region over the 18 years, including the period when Eugenie Sage was a member? Order. Mr Speaker. On order. Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, well, the member raises a very valid point. Over that time, the Regional Council made zero progress. They completely failed to, uh, to have an operative water quality plan, leading to deterioration of water in our home region of Canterbury. This government wasn't going to stand for that. The appointment of commissioners has made incredible strides forward. They are doing great work in pioneering the collaborative process. And finally, under a national government, we're getting some progress on water pro uh, pro quality in Canterbury. Order, order. 
Eugenie Said, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question. Is the Minister taking her ministerial duty seriously when the national bottom line for our rivers will keep the dairy industry happy, as evidenced by their media statements today, but will not make our rivers clean and safe for swimming for all New Zealanders? Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, will I take the fact that I have introduced any national bottom line incredibly seriously? That is something that Labour and the Greens never prioritised. They were happy for there to be no bottom lines, no requirements. They were happy for there to be no rules at all. We're not. We're lifting the game. Just like the EEC. Order. Order. Question number six, Tim McIndoe. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Education. What recent announcements...